Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today we're going to be talking about perceptions and judgments. Now I've said this before, we often judge ourselves on our intentions and we judge others on their behaviour. So we often judge ourselves on our intentions and we judge others on their behaviours. It's really interesting how we perceive ourselves and how there can be a really big difference in regards to how others perceive us. So I want to ask you a question. How do you perceive you? So what if you described and you had a pen and paper right now or even in your head and you thought about how do you describe you? What words do you come up with? Do you say kind, inspiring, compassionate, loving, a great listener? What words come to mind when you think about who you are as a person? How do you perceive yourself? And of course, we've all got light and shade because we're human And because we're uniquely, beautifully human, sometimes we have facets to us that are disempowering or that we are behaviours that aren't serving us. And then we have behaviours that are serving us. But in a whole, who do you think you are? Now, I want to ask you another question. And, And I want you to think, it doesn't matter how loving and kind and compassionate anyone is there will always be somebody that you have a conflict with in some way so I want you to think about someone that you've had a conflict with somebody that maybe you know in your heart that they see you differently to the way that you see yourself So maybe you had a bit of a blowout, you had an argument, maybe you're still not talking to them, maybe you've even parted ways now and you're not friends. I want you to think of that person and I want you to think of how would they describe you? How would they describe you? And sometimes what you might find is they might describe you or you might perceive them to describe you because it's only our perception, that they might see you in the opposite of what you perceive yourself. So you might see yourself as confident and inspiring and they might see you as pushy and like a bully. You might see yourself as kind. They might see yourself as unkind because there's a conflict there. And this can be really challenging, particularly when some people have a big need to be liked. And there is always going to be somebody that you're going to not have that match with or there's going to be conflict in the future with. So that's what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about perceptions and judgments and specifically three key areas Number one, I want to talk about others' perceptions of you and their hooks they could possibly have. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Number two, I want to talk about your trauma and your hooks that you possibly have. And the third one is I want to talk about internal self-regulation. So how you can, in those moments, if you're feeling, if they've got a perception of you that isn't what you what you desire, you might have trauma around that in some way and not feel great about it. How do you resolve that? How do you resolve that in a way that you can regulate your emotions and feel safe? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So the first one I want to talk about is how others perceive you and the hooks that they could possibly have. Now, 
if I think about how others perceive you, they have different values, they have rules, they have beliefs. They also may have seen you in one way and then in another way when it could be situational. So situational means something happens that changes the way they see you. And it's really interesting because one of my mentors once said, be very mindful of the person that puts you up in a pedestal and is like your raving fan. It's like, I love you. You're fantastic. Uh, be really mindful of that because if they put you on a pedestal really high, their expectations of you are really high. And whenever you 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 go down and you don't meet that expectation, it will be a big drop for them because it's like this is how they see you and you need to, for them, it's like they see you right up on a pedestal and if you don't tick one of their boxes, then you'll come down very quickly. And I thought that was a re really interesting learning and I've seen that play out. So people will have different expectations of you. It could be situational. They have different values, different beliefs. They will have uh, rules around what they think is right or wrong. And the other thing is they could have hooks from their past that has nothing to do with you. And I love language. So when I hear someone talking uh, about something that they're frustrated with but then it sort of goes on a tangent and they blow it up I know that there's probably some hooks from the past that they've experienced and you are a reminder of that so their values could be different their beliefs could be different situational now this is interesting because and I coach a lot of coaches and the more successful coaches are, the more people that they coach. If you've coached thousands of people, you will encounter a, a situation at, at one stage where there's going to be conflict or disagreement. And I remember there was a student that went to one of my classes and she did the course and she absolutely loved it so much so that that night she did a video on Facebook, which I didn't even ask her to do. I didn't know it was going to happen. And she tagged me in it and it was this whole big video to say it's life-changing, all that sort of stuff. And, and so, again, she's put me up on this pe pedestal. And so she went on about this and then she also wrote, wrote me a testimonial as well. And this was after the course and it was all fantastic. Now, this person was on a payment plan and about a month down the track, this person encountered some financial difficulty. Now, this is when the situation changed because she then contacted me and said, the course that I did wasn't what I thought it was going to be and I really knew all that stuff. And it threw me because I'm like, is this the same person that did that video, that did the written testimonial? And now after the fact, a month later, when she's got financial difficulty, she's then looking at stuff that she's saying that she didn't like in a situation so that she can not make any more payments because she was in a predicament. And so that is an idea of situational where something will change, a situation will change and therefore their thoughts and perception of you changes. Now, as I said, there could be hooks from the past. They might see something that you, that you do that, that unconsciously remind them of something in their past. So you might have something or say something and it reminds them of when they were young and they were bullied at school and it triggers that sense of trauma for them and so therefore they go back to that state and you're part of that state so be really mindful of that that can absolutely happen and people's it's challenging right because particularly if you're someone that has a, a huge need to be liked if someone is you've got this perception of who you are 
And then you've got this other person that's got this perception of who they think you are and it's completely different. The unfortunate thing is that it is out of our control in, in some sense. Of course, we have some control of how we communicate. But at the end of the day, someone is always going to have their own perception of you. And what we can do is we can take on the learnings that will serve us. We can look at our own behaviour. But at the end of the day, we can't change how someone perceives us. So if we're coming from, if we're someone that we need that validation from others, then we're going to be in a world of pain because not everyone's going to love us. It was so interesting uh, probably 12 months ago or a year and a half ago, I was on social media and I had a really strong opinion in regards to what was happening in the world. And our Premier at the time, well, he's still our Premier in Victoria. And I remember getting a message from somebody that I know and they said, I thought you were kind. And that threw me because... My perception is kindness is really important, right? That is who I am. And so suddenly someone's come from this side and said, I thought you were kind, but you're not. And that was like, Ugh, like a dagger, right? Because what is their perception of kind? Now you can look at all different words. You can say respect, kindness, fairness, whatever it is. We all have a different explanation of what each of those words mean to us now from my point of view I was being kind I was being strong I was standing up for those people that I feel have been done by wrong I was using my voice for people that haven't got a voice and I was protecting the people I felt need needed protecting so from my space Gee, I was coming from kindness. But from their space, the way they saw it, it was completely different. So it's really interesting how people can perceive you because even the way that they look at words and statements, they might perceive that in a different way. When you're thinking you're being kind and they're thinking you're being unkind. When you're thinking you're being confident and inspiring, they might think that you're being bullying. It's really important that we from look at both perspectives and understand that we might be seeing ourselves in a way, but the other people might be seeing it in a different way. And what I say about that is take what you need to from that. If there's a learning, take that learning. Always look at your own behaviour. But at the end of the day, if you look at your behaviour, you've got the learnings then understand that people will always have their own perception of you. Now, a lot of people will just say, I've heard this saying, I'll say, oh, don't worry, I don't worry about what people think. You know what? I think most people do worry about what people think. And I know just recently it actually prompted me to do this podcast today because I had a client, a past client of mine, talk about judgment and perceptions just recently and she was criticized in her parenting and it really hit her core right because if you think about your children from a mother's or father's perspective like mother bear comes out or father bear comes out and you want to protect and we most of us want to be the best parents we possibly can and we do the best job that we possibly can with the resources and knowledge that we have. But again, we might have different values, different belief systems. And then someone outside has then judged this person. And then not only that, what's then happened is they have communicated to somebody else in their circle, which has then affected their relationship as well. And that can happen. Because people can talk, right? And they can say, well, this is what I think about this person. Oh, this happened to me. And they talk to someone else to taint you or paint you in a certain light. I remember I used to be in a, a networking group called BNI. 
which is a fantastic group. And I was a treasurer there. And I remember when I first started, I used to get lots of people coming up to me and they would want to gossip about somebody. So they would say, oh, I need to tell you about such and such. And they did this and they're this type of person. And the first thing I would say to them is you're talking to the wrong person. You need to be speaking to that person about how you feel right now. And then whatever they said is not my interpretation of who I think that person is that they're talking about because I maybe have not experienced that. And so it's so important to when that does happen and you're on the receiving end of someone talking about somebody else that you understand that that's only their perception and that's only their experience. It's interesting because you look at two people, two different parties, and they've got a perspective and they've got a perspective and the truth is probably somewhere in between. So when you're talking to someone and they're talking about someone else, you're only getting their perspective. If you talk to the other person, they're going to get a completely different perspective. And so it's important for us to have those experiences ourselves so that we can, for ourselves, understand what type of person that is. And surround yourself with people that have your back. And I think that's so important because when you have people like that, it's interesting, I had a client and they asked me a question and they said, they said about friends of theirs that bagged their husbands, right? So they said, oh, you know, and that's what you do, right? That's what, you know, all, all our friends bag husbands. And I said, not my friends. And they were like, what? And I'm like, not my friends. The friends I hang around with don't do that. They don't bag their husbands. That isn't what they do. And so it was really interesting to see the tribe and the people that they hung, hung around with that then had that influence. So be very mindful of people's perceptions of other people that you're not taking them on board. So that's number one. The number two is your trauma. So any hooks that you have. So it was really interesting. Just yesterday, I had a challenge at in my business. And my challenge, it was so interesting because what can happen is others' perceptions of you, they can make assumptions of you, Right. And this person had said to me, well, it's okay for you. You've got a multi-million dollar home. And I was like, you know nothing about me. You know nothing about me. And I have clients who have the beautiful house, the beautiful car, the Louis Vuitton bag, and they might have relationship problems. They could have their own mindset problems, anxiety problems. They could have financial problems. People don't know. And so be really mindful of that. And so your trauma can come up from other people's perceptions. And what I mean by that is that they can say, this is what I think of you. And that can be a hook. That can be a hook of trauma. Something happened in your life and you feel it in your body. Now, when I say trauma, there's lots of different types of trauma. There's acute trauma, so it could be a big one event. So it could be a car accident or somebody was sexually assaulted or something like that. But it could be one trauma could could it could happen to someone and it may not be someone else's trauma. So it could be anything that's happened in your life that's that's made you not, you know, retreat and it's gone into your body. And so what can happen is when someone triggers that hook and they say this is who you are and it triggers that hook that's that was trauma in the past, that can be really tough and really challenging to deal with. So be really mindful of the hooks that you have. And I remember I did a big event once in Geelong and this event was going off. Everyone was having a great time. And then someone put their hand up. And the first thing this lady said was, JJ, I'm disappointed in you. And 
And it felt like someone had got a knife and stabbed me in the heart. It really did. Because disappointment was one of my hooks. I didn't want to disappoint. And so when she said that, I could feel it in my body. And then I asked her to tell me more. And then she went on to say that because I had images of kids, boys, in my presentation, she was disappointed because she thought that I was more about empowering women, not men. And then I had to explain that it's all that I empower men and women. And so it was a, an interesting belief system that she had. And so we explored that in the room. But when she said that, I'm disappointed in you, I felt it. Now that was a hook. So be mindful of that. And yesterday there was a hook that went to my heart. And it was one of those hooks that it was like, oh, that isn't who I am. And I'm sure everyone listening or watching would have experienced that, that you have someone out there, you may still have someone out there today that you know sees you differently to how you see yourself. And you may not be able to change that. But that's just life and you've got to take that as a learning. And as I said, make sure that you internally can resolve that. And we're going to talk about that with number three. So number three is our internal self-regulation. How do we regulate ourselves when we don't feel safe? So when somebody has got a perception of you and then triggers you in some way, gets that hook and maybe meet some trauma within you and you're feeling really heavy about it, how do you then resolve it in your body? Now, there's lots of different ways you can do that. And I, I, I want you to really think about a situation in your life when someone said something and you just, it's like you can't shake it. You feel it in your body, in your heart, maybe in your gut, maybe in your head. Somewhere in your body, you feel it. We need to have a strategy in that moment so that we can move through that and regulate it. It's really interesting. I saw a video with a deer and it was this deer in the wild and this lion chased this deer, got it in its mouth and laid it down and had this deer in its mouth and the deer played dead. And so the deer played dead and eventually the lion walked away. Now, the interesting thing is the, the deer stayed there for a while. And then what happened was the deer started shaking and it was shaking all over. And it was like shaking off. It was trying to regulate itself because it just had a traumatic experience. It nearly died. And so it shook itself off. And shook itself and shook itself and then it stood up and then it ran away. We have trauma in our life that we're not shaking off that stays in our body and we get this hook and it comes back. And it might be because we were told maybe not to cry as a child or we've just suppressed these feelings and we haven't, in trauma it's like doing that whole loop, that cycle of finishing that trauma and experiencing that trauma so it stays trapped in your body and so when we feel that way we need to have a strategy and so there's different strategies that we can have so it could be breathing strategy it could be getting up and moving and doing something with your body it could be going out into nature so interesting yesterday when I felt that hook and I felt physically sick. I felt really sick because someone had perceived me in a way that was so opposite to who I am. And I felt physically sick. And my son said to me, Mum, go for a walk to the beach and pat a dog. <laughs> and you know what? He was exactly right because the beach nature is my happy place. And so I was out there in the beach and my other happy place are dogs. 
And so I went out there. I had the sun on my on my skin. I had the beautiful sea breeze. And I went to the to the beach, which is just five minutes walk from our house. And I found a dog. And I patted that dog. It was someone else's dog. But I went up to it and I had a nice little pat and a little cuddle. And I felt so much better. And that helped me. So there's different straight. It could be that you get a journal and you write it all down and you get it out of your system. It could be go for a walk, go for a run. It could be ring a friend that you trust, that you know will support you. It could be have a big cry or get angry and actually punch your pillow. It could be putting faith, spirituality in God. Whatever's going to work for you, have that strategy. When you feel that way, when you feel that way, have that strategy that's going to support you. Now, I can't remember the last time I felt like that. I'm so fortunate because I work with amazing people. I work with the best people and it hasn't happened for such a long time that I've ever felt that way. But it hit me hard yesterday. It really did because I felt this disappointment. I felt that someone saw me in a light that wasn't who I truly am. And it, it really was in my body and I had to shake it out. And so it's really important for your trauma to be able to have that strategy. So again, I'll go back to the three points. The first point is others' perceptions of you. It's their hooks, their beliefs, their values. It could be situational. It could be huge freaking assumptions that they have about you that are not correct. It could be that they're they're looking at a value or a word like respect or trust or whatever and seeing it completely different or kindness completely different to you. And so that's others' perceptions and their hooks or they could have these past experiences that remind them of those experiences and it could be just the way you look, the way, the word you say or you're not going to give in to them or something that takes them straight back to that other trauma that they had and it's not all about you but you don't know about that yet or you may not ever know about that so that's number one number two is your trauma your hooks that you might have and so making sure that you understand what those hooks are and work through that and that's with number three is ensuring that you've got a strategy so that you can self-regulate and feel safe. It might be that when you're feeling that way, you stand up and you just hug yourself and say some great words to yourself. Try some different stuff, breathing, reading, going for a walk at the beach, running, a friend, praying, whatever is going to work for you, have that strategy. I trust that that's been of value for you. I want to finish on this quote that I think is fantastic. It's from Charles F. Glassman. And what he says is, judging others is easy because it distracts us from the responsibility of judging ourselves. I'll say that again. Judging others is easy because it distracts us from the responsibility of judging ourselves. Thank you, guys. I trust that this has been valuable for you. Make sure that you share this in some way with someone that you think will be valuable. I can't wait to share more insights onto my next podcast. Thanks, guys. Have an awesome week. See you.